Hi, this is Mushtaba Al Hello, and I'm your instructor in the course of Gothic fiction, Gothic novel. And uh, today we are going to talk about another important feature of the Gothic genre. Uh, I'm going to talk about the historical, the social, the political, the religious context uh, that led to the appearance of Gothic fiction. Uh, look, we should have some problem in the society, in the literary world, in the politics, in the history of that time. That leads to the appearance of a new movement in literature or, or a new movement in politics. Uh, because, as Marx said, that uh, revolutions normally appear when the symptoms increase in the society. Uh, because there is a failure in some previous movements, there is a failure in the society that leads to the appearance of a revolution, that people may make an appraisal against the previous order. That's why uh, the appearance of the Gothic genre, of Gothic novel, uh, implies that there was great problems in the society, in the English society, uh, from different perspectives. In, in the religious system or, or foundation. Uh, we have problems in politics, we have problems in the society, we have problems everywhere that we have this violent, radical explosion of literature in the form of Gothic fiction. It is a really one of the most radical uh, revolutionary forms in literature. We have, for example, the appearance of, of Romanticism, for example, uh, which brought with it new forms in literature, in poetry. We have we have uh, the appearance of, for example, Renaissance in Europe, but they were very smooth, or okay, smooth transformations from the previous order, from the, from the previous ideology. But for Gothic fiction, for Gothic genre, we have a very radical, explosive uh, revolution in the in the form of novel. We have everything new in this in this genre, in in the form of the characters, in in its nature, in the plot, in the stories, in the themes, everything. Wherever you look, you will find some revolutionary aspects in in the Gothic novel. It is one of the most radical revolutions that happened in the history of of, uh, of literature, okay, in the world, not only in England. So let's see what were the most important uh, revolutionary aspects of this genre. Number one, Gothic novel was a reaction to the age of reason, okay? Uh, Gothic novel appeared in, in, the, in the 19th century, okay, or at the end of the 18th century. So it was a break, it was a break from, from the age of reason, reason, it was a revolution, it was a reformation. It was a rejection of the age of reason. Number two, we have a reaction to the patriarchal society. We have, number three, Gothic novel as a re reaction to the church. And finally, fear and desire in Gothic fiction. It is a revolution against oneself. It is, it is a revolution against ourselves, number four, okay? So, let's go one by one. Uh, in the first one, Gothic novel as a reaction to the age of reason. The Gothic novel appeared as a reaction to the philosopher's reasoning. They left no place for imagination. They ex excluded any probability beyond the senses. This led to the fall of imagination and lack of freedom and pleasure in literature. The Gothic novel appeared against this rationality. It opened all the possible gates to the supernatural worlds. These worlds do not undergo the rational rules of philosophers. They do not obey the physical laws. Every type of emancipation from the physical world is allowed in the Gothic novel. So, uh, there are some points here in, in this definition, in this explanation. Number one, it was a reaction to the philosopher's reasoning. Uh, look, uh, in the age of reason, we have uh, Alexander Pope, we have Jonathan Swift, we have those great names that we all uh, respect and admire, that 
even after the passing of uh, three centuries, over three centuries now, we still read those great texts. We read those poems. However, one of the main problems of um, of the poetry of that age is that they invested so much on mind. They depended greatly on the mind, on rationality, on the reason of people. Uh, they tried to boast that they have that great ability to philosophize things, to propose new theories in philosophy. That's why uh, literature or poetry in specific, it, it, it was no longer something literary. It uh, underwent the domination of philosophy. It became the field of, of philosophical experimentations. Uh, now, when a philosopher wanted to propose a theory, he went to, to literature, to poetry, to, to propose and to apply his theory in, in poetry. So poetry became a field of philosophy. Poetry became, became part of philosophy at that age. Uh, there was no place for heart. Of course, we find imagination, we find emotions, feelings, but not the one that we all aspire to, not the one that we all expect to find in literature. It was not not that type of of, of feeling that uh, that that quenches our quest for feelings and for emotions. So uh, there was no place, for, real place for heart. It was only the place of mind and reason and rationality. So they left no place for imagination. Uh, of course, we have some normal type of imagination, but not that crazy wild you know free imagination that's that imagination that f we find in in romanticism that imagination that we find in gothic literature in gothic novel so uh we we have an absence of imagination and an absence of feeling and heart they ex excluded any probability beyond the senses they became so experimental they believed only what was their and touchable and whatever was beyond the senses whatever was beyond the grasp and domination of the senses like seeing hearing feeling smelling tasting whatever was beyond these senses these five senses uh, according to those poets or philosophers uh, it, it meant that it does not exist uh, so there was no place for some supernatural realms and worlds there was no place for imagination because they were beyond the senses this led to the fall of imagination and lack of freedom and pleasure in literature why we, why we find pleasure in literature because we get emancipated we get freedom from our everyday life experiences we get freedom or we get uh, emancipated from the chains of our everyday life we try to get freedom from those chains and rules and laws that society imposes upon us. That's why we resort to literature to find a new world, and a world that is displaced from this real world. Uh, that's why we find pleasure in lit literature. The Gothic novel appeared against this rationality. Gothic novel, uh, by the way, it was a feminine, a feminist movement. So, uh, they try to revolt against the rationality of the philosophers, uh, these women, these writers. It opened all the possible gates to the supernatural walls. They did not hes hesitate. They did not hesitate. Those writers to to tread upon all the paths that lead to supernatural walls. They did not hesitate to experiment or open the gates to any probable world, any probable monster imagination. Uh, danger, trauma, okay, uh, anything that belongs to, to 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 beyond this world. That's why uh, they were so great. They they had no limits to their imagination. They had no limit to their writings. Everything was permitted. Everything was possible in in their novels. Even even the taboo things that that society the english society uh, did not dare to to discuss it was allowed 
in gothic fiction. We have those sexual scenes in gothic fiction. We have those uh, taboos that nobody dared to explain and encounter. We have we find those taboos in gothic fiction. That's why there there are no limits in this world in the gothic fiction. Uh, its walls do not undergo the rational rules of philosophers. Of course, uh, philosophers there. There is no place for philosophy. There is no place for mind, for rationality, for reason in Gothic fiction, in Gothic novel. Uh, that's why uh, whatever undergoes rationality, you should omit it. You should suspend your disbelief according to Coleridge. So, nothing rational works in this world. They do not obey the physical laws. So, you should not expect that the apple falls down, it might go up. You should not expect uh, those uh, rules of physics work in this world. Nothing follow anything, okay? No, no, th there is no rule, no physical rule, no rational rule. Every type, of, every, every type of emancipation from the physical world is allowed in the Gothic novel. So, the only stable rule in Gothic fiction is emancipation is freedom there are no rules there are no chains there are no limits in this world that's why we find freedom from any rational mental thing that's that's amazing that's gothic novel as a reaction to the patriarchal society the gothic novel is a genre of the oppressed gender that suffered from patriarchal traditions this genre questioned all the social traditions. The female characters in such novels always try to create a stable identity for themselves. They feel a sense of identity loss and psychological weakness. The entire structure of the Gothic novel is a rejection of the patriarchal norm. As a compensation to this loss of identity and lack of social voice, female writers establish their identity in voiceless settings away from the heart of patriarchal civilization in a world that does not undergo the rules of the society so uh, m m uh, some of you may have not enough ideas about uh, the social patriarchal rules in england in the 18th and 19th centuries uh, it, it was a very hard, difficult uh, time or age for, for females. They did not have any rights to do anything. As you all know, that uh, they did not have to, the right to inherit from their fathers, from their relatives. They did not have any right to do anything. They were voiceless. Um, so, it, it was a mess for females at that time. You should read some some uh, books about that time. Uh, like a book, there, there is a book called, titled, uh, Females in the Victorian Time. It tells how injustice was done, how much injustice was done to females and women at that time. So uh, it is not as you see today in England that those feminist movements and how they can speak and how they have uh, they have rights to to participate in politics in, in the parliament and in the government uh, things were totally different at that time and you can find one example of injustice at that time in uh, pride and prejudice by jane austen when the mother wanted to uh, find husbands for her daughters because uh, the father was about to die and once he dies the daughters have no right at all to inherit anything from the father okay and it everything all the possessions of of the father will go to mr collins his uh, nephew so uh gothic novel was a reaction to that patriarchal society it break it 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 has broken all the laws it has broken all the change chains of of the patriarchal society so uh, that's why female writers were the beginners, were the initiators.
initiators of this genre who suffered from the patriarchal traditions at that time. Uh, so this genre questioned all the social traditions. It questions why should I be like what you say? According to one of the philosophers, uh, Slavoj Žižek, he proposed his theory, Chuvwa. Why am I what you say I am? Okay, uh, that's, he says that this is the ultimate uh, historic form uh, that, that you do not obey the rules of your society. So that, that's the situation, that's the sense in, in Gothic fiction, in Gothic novel. They question all the social norms. Uh, and the female characters, they always try by themselves to, to create an identity, an independent identity for themselves. They did not uh, inherit any norms from the society. They tried to revolt against, to reject those norms, those patriarchal traditions. Uh, that's why they tried to create an, a stable identity for them, themselves in their novels. Uh, and uh, as a compensation, they tried to make a world for themselves, a displaced world, a, a world away from the civilization of the males of that patriarchal uh, civilization and society. They tried to create their own independent identity in the settings that they create, in voiceless settings. Why voiceless? Because females at that time were already voiceless. They did not have social voice, political voice, cultural voice. That's why they said, okay, you keep your world, you keep you males, you society you keep your world for your, for yourself your logic for yourself your rationality for yourself and let me create my own world uh, by myself so they created the settings in voiceless places like as we discussed in the earlier uh, lecture they tried to create a, a setting which is voiceless which is far away from the heart of civilization uh, in the middle of, of, of dark, decaying forests, thick of, uh, of of trees, away from the light of the sun, away from uh, from cities, away from civilization. Uh, that's that's that was people's uh, look, and and that was the way people dealt with women at that time. Uh, voiceless. They were voiceless. That's why they tried to uh, to create a voiceless setting, the way that they were treated by the society, and uh, that they succeeded in creating uh, an independent identity in their novels. That's why uh, Gothic novel, though most of the women uh, they are afraid of watching horror movies, but it is your problem. You created this genre. So you should blame yourself. So I'm kidding. Uh, it belongs to all of us, and we all respect this genre. I really myself enjoy this one, and I admire, and I really thank those founding writers who created this genre. The next point is that Gothic novel was a reaction to the church. Okay, the appearance of Gothic novel was a sign. Sorry, it is it is a spell mistake. So it is a sign. Uh, Gothic novel was a sign of dissatisf dissatisfaction towards the church and its social corruption. It was a form of criticism of the misuse of the name of religion for their personal benefit. Uh, the church was, you know, in a mess. Uh, they misused the name of, of religion, of God, of Christ for their own benefits. They built their own empires uh, by by the money they collected from people. That's why we. It was really a corrupt uh, system. It was a corrupt society. Uh, that's why Gothic novel was a reaction, was a revolution against that system, against the church. Okay, we find similar examples uh, at that time by William Blake. We had the chimney sweeper. We have. The Songs of Experience. It is it is a book of uh, religious criticism. It, he criticized the Bible. He criticized God. He criticized everything that belonged to that system, to the religious system. 
to the religious authority. Uh, so uh, that voice of, of religious criticism uh, began and became so powerful at that time. And one of the manifestation, one of one of the uh, most challenging or, or genres that dared to speak loud was uh, was the Gothic genre, the Gothic novel, and it succeeded. And uh, the next point is Gothic and desire in Gothic fiction. Gothic bodies do not only trigger horror, but also fascination. Because it is associated with the pleasure of unregulated childhood desires. Uh, the fate of gothic bodies is a kind of desire. It is fate, not fate, okay? Uh, the fate of gothic bodies is a kind of desire. They represent dread, yet a state of freedom from every restraint. The escape of gothic bodies, their freedom, and their power for violent destruction represents a liberating breakdown of systems of repression. Uh, this is really interesting. We always like or love sometimes to watch horror movies. We like to read those uh, gothic novels. I remember when I, was, when I was 9 maybe or 10, I read my first gothic novel. It, it was about uh, some dead people coming to life, uh, opening their graves and uh, going and walking through the streets of the city. It was really uh, horrific, especially for that age. I was nine and ten. Uh, I, I hid that book from my parents so they would not take it away. But I was really terrified. I, I it had its effect on me and, and I couldn't sleep at least for some days. But why why I love to read that book? Why people like or love to read Gothic novel? Why they always uh, strive and they are, you know, they love to get those books. They like to, to watch those horror movies. That, that's a fundamental question we all should know. Um, you might have different answers, but but from from a psychological viewpoint, uh, it goes as uh, as as early as our childhood. When we were born, we believe that we are the center of the world because of the love of our mothers towards us. It's a very long theory, but to make it in a nutshell. Uh, when we enter the stage of language, we turn to acquire laws and rules by our fathers. So that's called uh, the symbolic register, the symbolic order by Lacan. Uh, that's the time when we are castrated. We come to learn about rules, about laws, about the social laws. Uh, that's the time when complexes are formulated in our mind, in our unconscious. So, from time to time, we love to break the social rules. We love to, to, to quench our desires, to uh, get back to those early childhood experiences of, of freedom and emancipation. So, when we watch, for example, a, a vampire, Dracula, for example, breaks the chain and gets out of the co coffin and go and suck people's blood, that gives us some unconscious pleasure. It reminds us of our childhood when we were free, when we we did not when we did not experience any laws yet. Uh, when we see, for example, the zombies go in the street without following any rule, it gives us pleasure that w we find ourselves in them, that we aspire to become like them, free from any super ego free from any social restraints and suppression and repression when we for example find a ghost a specter who walks through the wall walks through the doors without any limits without any chain that gives us some hidden pleasures in our unconscious so that's why that's the reason we like to watch gothic movies gothic read we, we like to read gothic fiction that's the reason and uh, finally, I would like to present an example, an amazing example of Gothic fiction 
which is the dramatization of the Exorcist. Uh, it was filmed in 1973, uh, as I remember. And uh, we can find these four points. Revolution against patriarchy. Patriarchal society, we find a uh, reaction to the church. We find uh, a reaction to mentality, to reason. And finally, we find... Uh, this emancipation from the rules of the society. So let's watch and l please uh, notify those points that we have discussed so far. Take me! Come into me! God damn you! Take me! So, uh, as we've watched this one, the interesting thing that uh, the monk could not, you know, take out that ghost, that uh, demon from the body of the girl. Why? Because, again, again, this is part of the criticism of religion, of the church. Uh, he, the only moment that he succeeded to get out that demon from the body of the girl is when... Uh, he he was very honest in his emotions. He start he started hitting that demon in the face. Uh, that that was the moment when he, uh, you know, he gifted freedom to that girl and he could free that body from that demon. Uh, again, we've we've seen uh, a criticism of the society. Uh, we've seen that uh, the females are always the victim of that society like the girl which was the victim of the norms of 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 uh, the chains of the site of the patriarchal society so uh, for the coming lectures uh, we will discuss further aspects and theories that concern uh, gothic fiction so thank you for watching please stay tuned bye bye